Can one statement be more true than another? Can things be more or less noble or more or less good? What does that have to do with proving the existence of God? Stick around to find out. In the previous episode of Aquinas 101, we reviewed the seven easy steps of St. Thomas's fourth way to prove the existence of God. We examined why we should think that step one is certainly true. Why, if some property is found to exist in different things in greater or lesser degree, then there must be some maximal degree of that property. In today's episode, we shall look at step two and see why we should think that it is true. Step two says the following. The properties of being good, true, noble, etc., are all found in different things to a greater or lesser degree. Now, St. Thomas considers the truth of this step to be more intuitive, and so he does not present us with any substantive argument in its favor. And in general, I think he is right to do so. After all, we make comparisons about goodness, truth, and nobility all the time. We say that some things are better than others in the sense that they have a greater share in goodness. As the cliche goes, it is better to give than to receive, by which we mean there is more goodness in the act of giving to another than in the act of receiving. We also say that certain things are more or less noble. For example, let's say you are at a baseball game and a fly ball comes in your direction and you catch it. It is more noble to give the fly ball to a nearby child than it is to keep it as a souvenir. We also commonly say that some things are more true than other things. For example, while it is true to say that a Catholic priest is unmarried, it is truer to say that he has taken a vow of chastity that dedicates his life to the service of the gospel. All that being the case, then the truth of step two is obviously true to most of us. However, some philosophers have a significant criticism to make here. There is an important principle in philosophy that says that something is either true or false, and that there is no middle ground between truth and falsity. The fancy name for this principle is the principle of the excluded middle. For reasons I won't state here, it is really important logically for this principle to be correct. What is more, St. Thomas certainly accepts the principle of the excluded middle as true and uses it on other occasions. But if it is so, how can St. Thomas think that truth comes in degrees? The answer is that the principle of the excluded middle applies to individual statements. Individual concrete statements and beliefs are either true or false, full stop. There is no middle ground in these cases. But two or more statements or beliefs can be more or less true in comparison to one another. This can be the case in different ways. Sometimes one statement is more true than another because it expresses more of reality than another statement. For example, take these three true statements. The earth is not the center of the universe. The sun is the center of the solar system. According to the standard model of physics, there is no center to the universe. All three of these statements are true, but the second is truer than the first, insofar as the second tells us something positive, whereas the first only gives us a negative statement. In other words, the second is truer because it is more informative. If we grant that the standard model of physics is correct, then we can also say that the third is truer than the second, because it tells us something about the universe as a whole, not just our solar system. Another way one statement or fact can be truer than another concerns how we gain that knowledge. For example, let's say that two people, Joe and Tom, are taking a math test. Now suppose that Joe did not study and just made up some equations and put down the right answer, which in this case happens to be 42. Tom, on the other hand, knew the proper steps and wrote out the correct equations that led him to the right answer, 42. Both Joe and Tom have the correct answer. But Joe's answer is less true in the sense that he made a lucky guess. On the other hand, Tom, because he knows the proper procedure, not only got the right answer, but knows why it is the right answer. So, in an important sense, Tom's knowledge is truer than Joe's knowledge because he attained the answer knowingly, whereas Joe did not and only knows that it is the right answer 
because his teacher marked it as correct. In these ways, we can say that truth does come in degrees without violating the principle of the excluded middle. Therefore, that being the case, it is easy to see why step two is true. And when we take step one and step two together, we get the following deduction. One, if some property is found to exist in different things in greater or lesser degree, then there must be some maximal degree of that property. Two, the properties of being good, true, noble, etc. are all found in different things to a greater or lesser degree. Three, therefore, there must be some instance where the properties of being good, true, noble, etc. are all found to a maximal degree. It is easy to see why, given the truth of steps one and two, why step three is also true. And so now we have seen why almost half of St. Thomas's fourth way for proving the existence of God works. Next time, we will continue our journey towards understanding the whole argument. Until then, may God bless you and keep you in his grace. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.